Hello, my name is Eric Bach. I'm a PhD student at the Aalto University in Finland and I'm going to present you today our probabilistic framework for the integration of mass spectrum and retention time information in the context of small molecule identification. In untargeted metabolomics, a challenging task is the identification of the small molecules present in the biological sample. Liquid chromatography, coupled with tandem mass spectrometry, so-called LCMS or LCMS2, is a popular tool for the analysis. Typically, we measure hundreds of MS features uh, where some have MS2, some might not have an MS2. I depicted the workflow down here. Your biological sample is fed into the LCMS2 machine, and first you get an LCMS spectrum where the molecules in your sample are separated by mass per charge and retention time, and each of the features here denoted with the uh, colorful circles uh, additionally, is associated with the um, MS2 spectrum, a retention time, and a set of potential molecular candidates. If you do not have an MS2, like in the for feature number two here, you might still have at least some MS1 information. What do we propose? We propose a probabilistic model and inference approach to jointly use MS and retention time information. Our model is MS score agnostic, which means that the user can define how the MS information is used. We do not require you to have any reference retention times of the target LC system available, and the output that we give to you is a ranking of the molecular structures in your user-defined candidate sets. So the key point here is really that we do not require that on, from the machine where your data analysis has been done, you have reference retention time measurements available. And we can do that by using the observed retention orders. I have depicted the concept here. So on the right, you see you have the different features. And based on their retention time, you see um, in which order they have been coming out from the LC system. And this defines you the observed retention orders. And by looking at all pairwise ob observed retention orders and comparing those with predicted ones, we can up or down word certain molecular uh, candidates. Let's look into a bit more formal description of the input and output of our model. So we assume to pro you to provide a pre-processed LCMS to datasets with n features and the dataset is uh, consisting out of a set of triplets where xi denotes the MS information either an MS2 or if not available an MS1 for example the precursor mass. Um, TI denotes the retention time that it was measured and calligraphic CI is the so-called candidate set. For example, the set of potential molecular structures extracted from PubChem using exact mass search. But you can also have some more um, application-specific smaller molecular candidate set. Um, we assume that you have pre-computed some kind of MS scoring. In case you have MS2 available, you can use popular tools like CSI Finger ID, MatFrag or CVM ID for that. In case you don't have MS2, but only MS1, for example, the deviation of the candidate and precursor mass or an isotope pattern uh, can be used. The output of, the, of our framework is then a single score for each molecular candidate for each feature. And that score um, integrates the MS as well as the retention time information and can be used for ranking. So how do we do that? So I'm now going through the actual model that we have. So first of all, we superimpose a probabilistic graphical model on the LCMS data, which is depicted here in the figure. We have the LCMS features and we have a fully connected undirected graph where the nodes now correspond to the MS features and the edges uh, correspond to all pairwise uh, features. And to each node, we associate a discrete random variable, zi, that indexes basically which candidate is selected for which feature and intuitively yeah it intuitively tells you that for example for feature uh, z5 the first candidate is now selected and we denote the complete candidate assignment down here as in the example with a bold uh, z okay so with the definition of a random variable we can now define a probabilistic model to actually 
uh, express the probability that the specific candidate assignment for the complete LCM is data. So how well does it fit the measurements? And we use a pairwise Markov random field for that, which is practically uh, a product of two terms. Um, one goes over the so-called node scores, which is the product of all node scores encoding the MS information. And then we have the edge scores, edge potentials, which is associated with the retention time information. With this probabilistic model, we can do uh, inference queries like, okay, find me the most likely candidate assignment or compute me the marginal probability of a specific candidate assignment when I, for example, assign a certain candidate R to a feature I, and it's feature I. So down here, I have just as a summary told, okay, how is the MS information encoded in the node potential functions, psi I? It basically just expresses the match of the MS information and the molecular candidate via a positive function. And we can use an appropriately scaled machine learning or in silico MS2 score, respectively some kind of uh, MS1 information. The more important part here is how do we exploit the observed retention order through the um, edge potential function psi ij? This function takes in two uh, random variables and their candidate assignments and outputs, okay, how well does the observed retention order of these two, of these two features matches the predicted retention order of the candidate pair? And it's done, this is expressed by basically this formula, which has these two parts. I will decompose that here because that's kind of the crucial thing. So in the first part, in the uh, one part here, we have basically the sign difference of the retention orders, uh, of the retention time, sorry, the retention time difference. And it's minus one if ti is smaller than tj and it's plus one the other way. So it encodes in what order we have observed the features i and j. The second part here is basically the difference of a score that is predicted um, for uh, each of the molecular candidates associated then with uh, feature i and j. And there is the same. These scores are positively correlated with the retention time. And that means that by looking at their difference, we can basically say in which order we predict those two molecules to come out from the chromatographic system. And if the sites basically of these two terms agree, then the product will be positive and we will get a higher edge score. A high edge score for a certain candidate contributes to a higher probability uh, for the complete candidate assignment. The retention order prediction here the, done by the uh, W, um, like it's a machine learning model, we use a ranking support vector machine, so-called rank SVM, and the molecules are represented using some kind of nonlinear features phi. So this could be uh, like, for example, a molecular fingerprint or something more complicated. And the rank SVM can be trained using an external set of retention time databases. Okay, so now we have the probabilistic model. We know how the information is used inside the, the model, but now we want to know how do we use that for ranking molecular candidates. So basically what we want is a score that can order molecular candidates of a feature depending on how well do they explain the data. And for that we use so-called max marginals, which means intuitively what is the maximum probability that a certain candidate assignment ZIR can achieve if I go, if I search over all other candidate assignments, so I shuffle through for all other features, what are their candidate assignments? And then I just check if I have fixed that, what is the maximum probability that I can see? So down here in this example, we have our five features and we now take feature number three and fix um, candidate number four. And with this uh, assignment fixed, we now search over all possible other assignments and find out what's the maximum probability that we observe. This is the max marginal, and we use this to rank each of the molecular candidates. 
So let us now look at how do we evaluate our uh, score integration approach, which data we use and what kind of results we get in the experiments. So we use a data set of roughly 680 reference MS2 spectra with retention times extracted from MassBank. We use a CASMI data and e the EA subset from MassBank. Um, the median number of candidates per MS feature is like 310. And we cover two different LC columns and mobile phase gradient setups. We sample repeatedly um, 50 to 100 uh, reference spectra plus retention time from our from our data set and create thereby artificially LCMS2 data sets for which we have reference in for which we have the ground true annotation which we need to evaluate our algorithm. Uh, on the retention order prediction model side we train on 1250 retention times covering various retention time databases and LC setups and we do remove before training all molecules that are in our uh, evaluation data set uh, to avoid overfitting. As performance measure, we use the top K accuracy, which is the percentage of correctly uh, ranked molecules at a certain rank. So for example, at top one means I assign the highest score to the correct molecular structure. Okay, the first experiment is a comparison to an alternative method where we have chosen a method that also uses only very little amount of the target LC system uh, or which requires only very little amount of uh, target LC system reference retention time data and this is done by uh, the Matfrag research group. Uh, they use log p predictions where they establish a linear model between a small amount of measured retention times and a log predicted log p values and then they uh, predict the log p-values for all the candidate sets, molecular candidate sets, and basically look at the deviation between the log p-value and the candidate's log p-value, um, and then um, can re-rank the molecular candidates. So here down we see as a baseline we use only MS information, which is uh, MATFRAG scores, and we can see that uh, we, so our method using the retention orders clearly outperforms the baseline and it also clearly outperforms uh, the MATFRAG approach using log p values. We roughly achieve like four percentage points improvement on that data set. Um, the next experiment is that we use different MS2 scoring methods, method methods for the MS2 baseline scoring. Um, we have Matrac uh, as an in silico fragmenter and we have IOKR as a machine learning based uh, approach. And what we can see is that we can improve over uh, the baseline for both of these um, for both of these MS2 scoring methods. Uh, what we see is that the final performance that you actually achieve is depending on what's the baseline performance of the MS2 scoring method. So for example, in top one, uh, IRKR has much higher performance than, than MATFRAG. Uh, and we see that, okay, with the MATFRAG we can improve by four percentage points, but we still don't even reach the, the performance of IRKR itself. Uh, same thing is for uh, top 20 where MATFRAG performs better and but even there if we use IOKR and then add the retention time on top we still don't we still only reach roughly the MATFRAG performance without any retention time. This means the retention time that we add it probably rather fine tunes the baseline uh, ranking that we get using different scoring methods and then uh, adds on top of that. And our last experiment that I will show you here today is that we um, simulated a case where we don't have any MS2 information available by varying the amount of accessible MS2 in each of the LCM, simulated LC MS2 data from 0 to 100. If we don't have MS2, we use the mass deviation uh, for ranking the candidates. And what we can see is that for top one, we get a kind of pretty constant improvement, like around four percentage point from zero percentage MS2 available to 100. Whereas for the top 20, we see that uh, actually we reach a quite high improvement for 
if, if you almost have no MS2 data available and the gap closes up to have one up to 100% available MS2 spectra, which means that you kind of if you measure MS2, it's the strongest information and you actually uh, probably like that's how you can really improve. But it also means that some of the uh, some of the jumps that you additional information you get by additionally MS2 spectra, you can compensate by using retention times. So as a summary, we proposed a probabilistic model for the integration of MS2, uh, MS and RT information and retention orders enable us to uh, go into new LC systems without uh, retention time reference data. Uh, we can significantly improve the ranking using the retention orders and this uh, framework is very efficient. So for 75 features, we can process the data set in a couple of minutes. Thank you for your attention. For the questions, we are also available at our poster. Thank you.